Hello guys, how are you doing? Now I, it was very wet about five minutes ago. Welcome to Glasgow I guess. The sun is shining right now but it was absolutely pouring when I set off which is why I am done up like a little yeti, a little purple yeti. But we are actually at Glasgow Green which is a park Gypsy has not been to yet because it's a bit busy but uh, where we're going is Glasgow Women's Library. Now if any of you have browsed my website and if you haven't glasgowgallerina.com can highly recommend it. Um, you'll notice that I have actually had some good fortune to have poetry uh, win some competitions at Glasgow Women's Library. Um, the first one was for a Mixing the Colours project all about sectarianism in Glasgow and that poem, The Clyde, was the winner of their November kind of, they used to call it Dragon's Pen, now I think it's just the Glasgow Women's Library competition. And I also, one of my personal favourite poems, Knowledge, about Eve and the apple and the tree of knowledge, was also lucky enough to be a winner the, the kind of two years later, I think it was. So yeah, I've had really uh, great luck with my work here. It's a beautiful resource. It's, um, I don't actually know how old the place is, but it is a kind of space for women's voices to be heard in the city. And for one week only, it is home to a renaissance woman. So last vlog we saw the classic renaissance man, Leonardo da Vinci. Now we are going to see Artemisia Gentileschi. I do hope I've pronounced all of that right. Um, Artemisia is known as one of the very few women renaissance artists. Um, no doubt there were many others, but of course it was incredibly difficult to access the resources, access the freedom required to create art. And she is one of the very few that we know about. Now what we're going to see is her self-portrait. It's travelling, like Leonardo's work, it's travelling around the country and Glasgow Women's Library have it for, I think it's only about a week, to coincide with International Women's Day, which is also Women's History Month. So the library, they will not prize our international women display down. We are sticking fast with it throughout March. But we are going to go and have a look at Artemisia's painting. I don't know if I'll be able to take you in with me, I hope so, but if not I shall show you a bit of Glasgow Green and a few of the Glasgow landmarks along the way. raining again. I should have filmed this in the sunshine. It's lovely walking up. Now it's not so lovely walking down. But I wanted to show you this building that's coming up. The white one here. Now this, I don't know what it is today. Maybe just flats. But it used to be known as the Institute for Fatherless Boys. And this was the school that my great-grandfather attended, so my grandma's father. Oh look, the sun's coming out. I can tell you my story now. Let me just give my... Oh, that made it worse. You see the little statue up on the top there of a boy reading? So yeah, it was known as the Institute for Fatherless Boys because my... Now my so my grandma's father his own father, so her grandfather, my great-great-grandfather, he had drowned in the River Clyde when his son was 12 years old. So that left him a fatherless boy and he came to school here. Um, so she always remembered it. She grew up very near here and I just wanted to let you have a little glimpse of this beautiful building here. 
I'm back. This weather does not know what it's doing. I got kind of blown down the road there. A little bit of sun, a lot of rain. But the exhibition was really, really fascinating. It's a very small space, naturally, because it's not in the National Gallery anymore. It's travelling. And it did make me feel a little bit self-conscious just because it was so small and you're kind of all hovering around this painting. So I might not have filmed as much as I'd hoped. I'm sorry if that's the case. But yeah, it was very incredible painting to be in the presence of. I know that there's a lot of attention to the classical illusions within the painting, the idea of rape and sainthood and martyrdom, which of course is incredibly important to the composition, but I'm quite keen to look at it as a painting in its own right as well, to respect her life as an artist and certainly not define her by her experiences. So in that sense it really was, it could stand alongside anything and indeed it does in the National Gallery. Very, very accomplished, um, very technically proficient. There's elements of kind of lace and pearls and they really literally shine. They are translucent and elegant and yeah, rendered in an incredibly skillful way. All the more admirable for how difficult it would have been for a woman to paint and to achieve what Artemisia did during her lifetime. So yeah, it's well worth a look. I think, I'm not sure where it's moving on to next. Um, it's only up here until Tuesday, but if it's coming to anywhere near you, definitely well worth a look. Hello everyone, and now we are at exhibition number two. So yeah, I've been very busy this kind of, this week, well actually it's probably been about 10 days because I do not have, sadly I do not have an exhibition opening every single week but we are going, I'm actually here at Glasgow Uni. Do you remember in my Da Vinci Dippy video I showed you the Glasgow Uni Tower? I am now in the place itself because I'm going to the Hunterian Art Gallery this evening for the opening of an exhibition of, I believe it's German Expressionists. Uh, to be honest the email came out a long time ago, I'm going with my dad who works at the uni. Um, and I, I want to say trees or disease. I, I just thought, oh, I haven't been to the Hunterian for a while. And now as a member of the public rather than a student, I have to pay. So I, I have not been for a while and I thought, oh, come. So don't 100% know what the content will be, but I shall, of course, take you with you take you with me even and give you a little glimpse of it. I think it's German Expressionists. Um, but that, as we all know, could mean quite a lot of things. And after that, we are heading down to a restaurant, which I've never been to before. I Hang on. I have been to restaurants before. Um, not this particular one. It is Eusebi's Deli. Uh, so I think that's Italian. I've really not got a good grasp on tonight's itinerary. I've been very busy. Um, but yeah, that is an Italian deli. We're going to head down there and have a little bit of dinner while my mum looks after Miss Gypsy. I really want to show you my outfit. I'm quite pleased. It's nice to be out of kind of painting, dog walking, writer shuffling around the woods <laughs> clothes. I'm back in my, because I used to be, I always used to love fashion when I was here, when I was studying, um, but that has uh, turned into a bit of a dog's dinner. We all know who to blame the dog's Damn dinner on. Me. But yeah, I'll try and show you my outfit. Um, in fact, I'll maybe have to get my dad, if he promises not to drop my camera, he can show you my outfit some of the grass in because it's prettier with the trees so let's do like and you just film me and then I'll huh. <laughs> and you didn't drop it well done <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to film you going up the stairs no that's fine I'll just film this bit thank you though so this piece is not actually part of the exhibition we're here to see, but it is by Bessie McNichol, who was one of the Glasgow Girls, a group or a movement, maybe not quite a movement, more of a loose group, but uh, one that I am very attached to because it includes Frances and Margaret MacDonald, my all-time favourite artists. And I also just fell in love with this one. Um, I'm not an artist that I know much about at all, but it says here that he often incorporated wood and kind of found materials into his work, but here they are overlaid, they are combined at least with gold leaf, so a very, very unusual effect. There are also really subtle cutouts within the black um, that I hope you can see on camera, so and in fact that's a line in Ellen and Arbor, that black isn't really black. It's naked attraction, haha, <laughs> just kidding. This is actually an icon of the Hunterian, so I thought I would include it as well. Now 
one of the interesting things about the Hunterian is that they don't tend to go for white walls. They've been kind of duck egg blue in the past and they're going for this very edgy black, which I do like. So this exhibition was all about prints in Weimar, Germany and how prints were often used to communicate political ideas. I was immediately drawn to this work because it really reminded me of the work of Margaret and Frances MacDonald. Now, lo and behold, you see Sylvan McNair there? Sylvan McNair was actually Frances MacDonald's son. Now, anyone who studied art history is going to remember Albrecht Dürer. Dürer? Dürer? You know who I mean. Uh, iconography abounds. I'm sure there are a lot of people who've written essays on melancholia. And I was really struck by this Egon Schiel print as well. Um, he's received a lot of attention recently, like Beardsley in Britain and my beloved McDonald sisters. And who saw a Picasso coming? Was not expecting him at all. And he's one of those artists with such a diversity within the work he's created. Much like um, Van Gogh, you never quite know what you're going to find. And I picked this one because it really reminded me of Alistair Gray's work. If any of you have read Lanark or looked at his illustrations, very similar in style. Sleeping peasant couple. Oh. Couple goals circa 1912, I suppose. Aren't they sweet? Now, back to some serious work, and I had actually never heard of this artist, uh, Kath Colwitz, and I really don't know why. Her work is so confrontational and powerful, and you can see that she's often depicting working-class women as well. And this one, I couldn't leave without drawing attention to this. It is just delightful. It actually reminds me of um, Chagall. The, now, when I was published in The Rooftop Busker, they had a Chagall painting on the cover. Let me see if I can insert it here. And it was this sort of sweet little fiddler, quite similar to this, um, although the colours here are different, of course. You could also, I suppose, reference Jack Vetriano, but uh, art historians aren't supposed to. <laughs> I'm laughing at you jumping out the way. Say hello, Dad. Hello. Hello. <laughs> A fellow film fan. Fellow camera fan. A camera club of two, that's us. Here we are, the Yes, here we are. Ooh. Good, I'm hungry.